What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, and uh, we are back to your regularly scheduled program, meaning I am back in Key West, uh, headed out on the boat with Aaron, and we are going to go... We're going to go drift for Wahoo. I'm going to drive the boat in safety Aaron. Um, brought my rod and reel just, to, you know, if we hit something kind of cool, top water. And back to the jets already. Oh, they're flying right overhead. So cool. Um, but yeah, we're going to drift for Wahoo. And if anything uh, cool is top water, I'll do a little bit of jigging um, and hopefully get into something. But. As you can see, we're not at uh, Hogfish, where Aaron usually keeps his boat. This is a place called Beach Weekend. It's just right around the corner from Hogfish, but he moved his boat over here. So we're going to be uh, leaving from here from now on. But it's good to be back. Happy to get out on the water, and uh, hopefully we do some uh, good fishing today. Let's go. All right, I was, I was promised nice flat seas. <laughs> I, uh, light, light wind out of the north. Light we got... variable out of the east. <laughs> so. Welcome to fishing. <laughs> Welcome back to Key West. Um, you know, not, it's actually not that bad. It's not, uh, it's running, not. It's running is worse than it's sin. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, and on camera, it never translates, ever. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention, too, a lot of you guys message me either on Facebook or Instagram or email. Um, a couple of the questions that I get, one of them being about the sunglasses that I wear, it is in the description of every episode. If you go to the description, it's there. There's a 20% uh, a, uh, off code there for you and everything. So you don't need to email me to ask me the sunglasses I'm wearing. <laughs> but uh, all right, we're gonna get set up here. Aaron's getting in the water and I'm gonna wet a line. So Aaron's in the water. He's right behind me. I got a, uh, uh, it's about two ounce jig on. Uh, I dropped down, we're in about a hundred feet. But. When I'm safety in Aaron, I don't uh, really pay too much attention to my own fish, and I'm trying to keep an eye on him, you know, and see if that float moves or anything in the background, and that way I can then fire the boat over to him in case he needs any help. But we'll throw the jig down a couple of times, but uh, mostly, mostly I'm banking on him catching something that I can work with. It's also really windy out, so I don't know if you can, uh, if there's a lot of noise on there or not. But he already said there's a bunch of zero going around, so we'll see. I also don't want to get too far away from him. We're drifting pretty fast, so I'm gonna bring this up after this drop and then head over by him. There we go. I want to get down to the bottom faster without so much bow in the line. Oh, it's something small, but we're on. There it is. Oh, it's a mackerel. Yes, it's a mackerel. It's a tiny bonita. No. Ugh. Oh my gosh. How funny is that? Look at the size of this thing. And it took that jig. This tiny, tiny little bonita. There he goes. All right, back at it. Oh, it hit on the drop. I wasn't even jigging yet. A little bit bigger than the last one. Coming up to the top pretty quick, so probably another Bonita. Yeah. Let's see. Slightly better Bonita. <laughs> Not 
Not much better. Alright. Another one. Send them back. Alright, if we get another Bonita, we're just cooking them. <laughs> not showing up on the screen or anything they're just like I said that one took it on the drop oh Aaron's dropping down I'm gonna watch his float and if I see that float move we will take off Let's see now now that I said that I'm gonna cook a bonita we probably won't catch one but we'll see see what I'm really banking on is our buddy in the water there spearing something. That's that's what I got my fingers crossed for. I mean, trust me, I'm happy to catch my own fish here, but <laughs> this is this is just secondary. I need that guy to spear a nice big wahoo. I really only like being about a hundred yards away from him, not that far, so. As long as I can see his flasher buoy and his uh, his float to his gun, I can also spot he wears a white snorkel, so makes it very easy. Okay, so this is an absolute first for me. Uh, hang on, let me make sure I'm on there. I believe these are called slippery dicks. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's pretty ridiculous. Definitely not what I'm after. No, uh, no spikes or anything on here to mess me up. No. Very good. Why this fish was going after this jig, I don't know. But this looks real good. I need the uh, need the pliers. Be right back. So the sun is heading down. Uh, lots of small stuff. Nothing even really worth filming. Uh, a slippery dick on the jig is something else. Like, that might be a record for dumbest thing caught on a jig. <laughs> uh, Aaron's doing one more drift. He hasn't had much luck in the uh, Wahoo department. He said there's a ton of trigger fish down there and uh, asked if I wanted them to shoot one for me. You know, if one passes in front of his gun, why not? But. I told him don't go out of your way. Uh, so we'll see. Right now it's not looking, it's not looking good. Aaron said there's a school of about a hundred Bonita that's just kind of circling around. I just got to get in front of them. But like I said, it's not, it's not looking hopeful. Well, pretty, pretty tough day. Um, sun's almost setting there. This is going to be the last uh, drift for Aaron. And like I said, I tell you, you know, if a trigger fish crosses his path, take it. But if not, that's okay. I'm not big into uh, killing something just to kill it. So we will see. On the way home, I'm going to try to talk him into letting me... Uh, troll for a little bit and see maybe if I can get one one last Hail Mary we'll see if the school of Benita is around there's like a hundred of them we have a little bit more of a chance trolling to uh, hit one of them let's see what he says well just when you think it's hopeless <laughs> he's got a fish in his hand <laughs> There we go. Very, a very rare trigger fish. Put this down. We got a good look at him. There we go. So people hate cleaning those things because their skin is, it's like leather. It's super, super tough. But if you go in and clean from the uh, inside out, meaning not cut towards the skin, but out away, 
Um, they're actually pretty easy to clean, but uh, I got a pretty good idea for that for that guy. So, hey, we got a catch and cook. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We're cooking. So as I was saying, not a lot of people target the trigger fish due to how difficult it is to clean them. Um, so it's a super healthy stock and there aren't on the ocean trigger fish down here. There's no regulation other than it's open season all year round. There's no size and uh, I think it's like you're allowed up to 100 pounds or something like that. So that's a pretty meaty one. That's a good one and uh, that is going to serve us well. Um, yeah, I mean, beautiful day back in Key West. I'm not that upset about it, you know? Whenever you got Aaron in the water, you know you're not gonna starve. I mean, what more could you ask for? Pretty good evening. So the, the skin on this, I mean, you could make a wallet or something out of that. It's pretty amazing. Um, these guys also release an insane amount of slime. So I really washed, washed this one off and we'll keep wiping them off as we go. But uh, another shout out to uh, Aaron for putting a hole there for us to get started. Because <laughs> otherwise it is hard to get through these guys. The uh, skin a lot of people use serrated, but uh, if you cut from the inside, it's just that first initial uh, initial slice that's hard. And also, big shout out to uh, Nathan Duvall sending me a nice sharp Dexter. Appreciate it, buddy. But you want to go through, and once you get through, it's actually quite easy to fillet from the inside out just like that but you gotta go from the inside now truth be told in my life I've probably cleaned I don't know four trigger fish total <laughs> so I don't find them that hard, but if I had about 50 of them that I had to clean, I don't think I'd be too, too excited. So if I miss any, any meat on this, you guys are forgive, forgive me, right? It is an incredibly white flaky meat and firm so it lends itself so well to things like ceviche which is exactly what we're doing there you go look at that meat that is perfect. I missed a little bit, but it's okay because we're actually using this carcass for something else, and I'll explain that in a moment. But let's get this skinned and out of the uh, out of the sun here. There you go. This is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, you could make you could make a wallet or some boots out of that. We'll take the uh, pin bones out of there.
But yeah, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous fish. All right, we'll do the other side and then I'll show you what we're doing with the carcass. There you go. Our two trigger fish fillets. Yeah, left, left a little bit on there, but I'm all right with it. Like I said, I've filleted about maybe four of these in my life, so still new to me, but like I said, going from the inside out and the help of a very sharp knife. Now, let me show you what we're doing with the carcass and the skin. So utilizing the whole fish doesn't always come down to cooking. It can be pretty much anything utilizing the whole fish. So one of the things that a fish carcass is absolutely amazing for is fertilizing soil. So right here, got a hole dug. There you go. And that's going in, so we're gonna bury that let it mix in with the soil, and in time, we're gonna plant a mango tree there, or Aaron's gonna plant a mango tree, but what that's gonna do is add so many nutrients to the soil, and it's gonna make this area super, super nutrient rich. And uh, again, utilize the whole fish, nothing goes to waste, and this is a great, great use for it. Okay, to prep our fish for ceviche, we're just gonna cut it into cubes. And normally people cut it down into really small dices, but we're going to cut it and leave it kind of big. I did it once before on the channel with Wahoo, but where it stems from, there's a restaurant down here called Little Pearl and uh, some nice big chunks like that. Uh, the restaurant down here, Little Pearl, was the first time I had it like that where it was not chopped up into small little bits and it was actually big pieces and just the other day we were at our friend's restaurant called the docks and what's funny is that the owner owns little pearl as well and that's how they do their ceviche so that's what uh inspired me to do it this way now one of the reasons that people cut their fish down in ceviche in restaurants is to hide the quality of the fish so if you have something really fresh and really nice like this, you can leave it larger chunks and you're not going to get a, a fishy bite. And especially with trigger fish, because as you see, there is no bloodline. It's such a clean, beautiful fish. It's probably one of the best fish for fish sandwiches. It's so firm and perfect. lemon and three limes we're gonna put that on top and actually let this sit in the fridge for almost the entire duration of it curing and for those of you that don't know which I take for granted sometimes new people to the channel but ceviche is they use the term cook but it's not cooking the acidity in the lime and the lemon is curing the fish and it gives the appearance of it being cooked because it turns that opaque white, but uh, it's actually curing it. And then how many limes and lemon you need obviously is dependent on how much fish you're curing and the other thing is I like to let it cure for a little bit before I add everything else in because when you add like cucumber and tomato and all those things they release water and the water dilutes the acid in the lime and the lemon so it's good to get this going on its own to cook the fish then add your veg or whatever you're adding to your ceviche Okay, this is going into the fridge. We'll see you in a couple hours. All right, so while that's in the fridge curing, I'm actually gonna 
get some of our other stuff ready. So I just have red onion here and a serrano chili. Now we are gonna add other things to it, obviously, but these are two of the two of the main. And I'm not gonna dice this up, I'm gonna keep it nice long strips. So another trick, you can soak onion in water. And uh, when you do that, it actually takes out some of the oil that's in the onion that makes you burp. But we're not gonna do that. <laughs> I like burping. And the other thing I have here is a serrano pepper. So a lot like a jalapeno, but a little bit of a different taste. So again, we're not chopping that up. We're gonna keep it little, uh, little discs. That right there is the sign of a very sharp knife. <laughs> I can smell how hot this pepper is, so we might not be using all of that. Okay, put this aside. Okay, we're about halfway through the curing process, so we're only, only a couple hours in. But now we're gonna add our red onion and our serrano because I want them to break down a little bit too. I don't want just raw onion in there. Give that a good stir. And once I stir this, going back in the fridge for a couple more hours. And then we'll finish making this. This is just the start. But adding uh, the onion is actually going to slow down some of the curing process because it's going to release water into the lime juice so it'll slow it down a little bit that's why I just wanted to get a head start on everything and now we're gonna put in the onion back in the fridge we'll see you in a little while so I have this pretty close to where I want it um, so now I'm gonna add all my seasoning and everything else so I have here garlic salt Some cumin, some cracked pepper, and some cilantro, which I'm not going to chop. We're leaving everything big in this, so we're going to do just whole leaves. All right, and then just a little bit. This is just uh, pureed tomatoes. So we're going to take a little spoonful of that. Give this a stir, and then after we stir it, mix everything together. It's going back into the fridge, and we are going to fry some tostones. So to make the tostones, you want the greenest plantains that you can get. They go from green to yellow to brown to black. And as, as they go, the sweeter they get. But we don't want sweet ones, we want crispy chips. So if you've never peeled a green plantain, you don't know. <laughs> how how tough it is but this makes it easier make a couple of lines down the peel and they also oxidize pretty quickly so you want to move somewhat fast so I have some oil heating up inside ready to go but I just want to show you one of these then I'll get the other ones ready okay and then we're gonna cut them into probably about a little more than one inch because then we're gonna fry them twice you do the first fry then smash them and then do the second fry and obviously the bigger you go the bigger the, uh, the chip about an inch and a half on these. Alright, 
Let's head to the fryer. So for the first fry, I have my oil at about uh, just under 350. And you want them just barely because this is going to cook the plantain all the way through. And then the second fry is to get them nice and crispy. All right, so just as they start to get a little bit golden, pull them out and onto paper towel on a rack. Get some of that oil off of there. While my oil is coming back up to temp, these have cooled down just a little bit. So you get wax paper and just with a pint glass, give them a good smash. And you don't have to go too thin on them. There you go. Put those aside. So a lot of people put these into water with garlic and lime, and they say that it gives it a little bit of a better interior on the second fry. Um, I'm fine with them just this way. That's it. So we're gonna do the rest of these and move back to the fryer. I have my oil up to high heat because we wanna crisp these pretty fast. So I'm gonna try one real quick, there we go. And it should be pretty quick. I got it at about 400 degrees. And then I have my rack here, paper towel. And the minute we pull these out, we're going to salt them. Which, let me get that ready. We're good. You get the idea. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm glad you shot that trigger fish. <laughs> no, I'm really not regretting that. <laughs> there you go. That's your plate. He's going plate, I'm going bowl. Mm. Dude, I could just eat these. The, uh, so while it was curing, I will admit, we kept stealing little pieces every single, every couple of, so I don't often. know, half hour or so. And it did soften up at first. It was really, had like quite a snap to it. And it's uh, it softened up really good, actually. Yeah. The smaller pieces. I'm just going straight, old school, savage. <laughs> and also, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it with how much wind there is right now, <laughs> but oh, it's crunchy. <laughs> I can promise you that. Babe, you're missing it. <laughs> Mm-mm. No, Madeline's working inside. Oh my goodness. But we're gonna bring her a bowl. I'm pretty happy about that. It's not a traditional ceviche, especially with a little bit of tomato puree. But I I figured why not? People add tomatoes all the time. Oh, someone's off camera. <laughs> You're just gonna see a hand come in. <laughs> Did you explain that my face is I'm no. Just kidding, kidding. <laughs> There's like crunchy chewiness. Oh my god. Mm. Ooh. Yes. Wow. I've also never put cumin in a ceviche. Really? No. I always do it. I always oh do my just a dash. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you might not be able to see her, but you can hear her. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> no ceviche. 
Alright. I think this means I'm officially back in Key West. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well. Mm. It's like a... I don't even know the words. <laughs> well, people get touchy about... Like, if you eat ceviche with, with corn chips, people get... It, I, you want to set the internet on fire, eat something a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> and people get really upset That's about corn tradition. chips. Yeah, that it can only be eaten with plantain chips, not corn chips. You know what? Put in the comments, corn chips or plantain chips? And why? Tell me why. I think that's the way any, that it's supposed to be. Any vehicle <laughs> to getting into my mouth is what I would Speaking prefer. Speaking vehicles, that car horn's been going on for 45 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, any, any vehicle to get the food, I mean, <laughs> a fork. I'm good. <laughs> I don't even need a chip. Wow, this is excellent. Good wow. job. All right. And in a year, you'll see a mango tree where we buried that trigger fish. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Four times a time. Well, all right, guys. Thanks for coming along on the adventure. And uh, hopefully you saw Aaron's video. They kind of go together a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> our videos. It's the same day, but two very separate experiences. <laughs> um, but anyway, we will see you on the next one. Good. This is incredible. Mm. <laughs>